Welcome to this week's broadcast. The Ten Plagues of Egypt That same day, the Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters and the foremen to stop providing the Israelites with straw binder for making bricks. From then on, the slaves had to go and gather straw for themselves, but they would still be required to produce the same amount of bricks every day. Ten Plagues of Egypt To make mud bricks you will need some soil some straw, a little bit of water, and a container, and energetic children who will stomp the soil into mud. No one? Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? Very hard. Is it very hard? Yes. <laughs> what have we got in there? We got as hay and ground and water. And a little bit of water. Let's have a look. So what are we making? We're making bricks. And we're making this mud to make the bricks, right? Yes. Okay. Good stuff. Can you get out so we can see how it has been binding? After you have mixed all the ingredients together, you can place it into a container in which it can dry. We used a bread pan so that it can have the shape of a brick. Okay, so this is our Egyptian brick and it's been drying now for about a week. 
usually the Egyptians had to wait 25 days for a brick to dry properly before they could build with it. So just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. Okay, so this is our brick. It's pretty hard, guys. I must tell you, it is pretty hard. Um, I think it's still a little bit moist. So it would probably need to dry for another few weeks to be a proper brick. But it gives you a good idea of what the Israelites had to build, had to make. They had to make these bricks. The Ten Plagues of Egypt The Israelites spent a lot of time looking for straw. The taskmasters still expected them to make the same daily number of bricks as they had done before. When the production went down, the taskmasters beat the Israelites for men and asked them why aren't you making the same number of bricks as you had before? The Israelites' foreman went to Pharaoh, complained to him. Why do you deal like this with us? We are not given straw, but we are still expected to produce as many bricks as before, and then they beat us when it is not our fault. Pharaoh answered, You are lazy and don't want to work. That is why you asked me to let you go and offer sacrifices to your God. Now go back to work. You will not receive any straw, but you must still make the same number of bricks. The woman went out, disappointed. They saw outside Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them and said, God has seen what you have done and will judge you because you have made Pharaoh and his officials loathe us so much that they will kill us. Moses turned to God and asked, Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? Since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has treated them even worse and you have not helped them at all. God answered, Now, you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. He will let them go. He will even drive them out of this land. Moses asked God, How can I, a lousy speaker, make Pharaoh listen to me? God answered, I will make you like a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother will be your prophet. And you will tell Aaron everything that I say to you, and he will tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and although I will multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you until I lay my hand upon Egypt and bring the Israelites out of the land. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I raise my hand against them and bring the Israelites out of their country. The Ten Plagues of Egypt Okay, so here's Piro Legit, our mummy. As you can see, it is pretty black.
Okay, so you can see how it is drying out the moisture out of the apple. But it's a very long, tedious process. Can you imagine for 40 days, a person had to be dried out to be mummified? Wow, this still feels a bit squishy, it's soft. Um, so I'm guessing there is still moisture inside, so we'll add another bit of salt and then leave Erolaje to rest again for another week. Bye! The Ten Plagues of Egypt The two brothers went back to Pharaoh and ran through the walking stick until the ground and then turned to a snake. Pharaoh told his magicians to do the same and they also turned their sticks to serpents. Although the magician snakes were eaten by Aaron's snake, Pharaoh was not impressed and refused to let the people go. The first plague. God instructed Moses and Aaron to go early the next morning to the place in the river where Pharaoh bathed and to strike the water with a walking stick. And the moment when the king come out of the water, then the water would turn into blood and it would stink. The fish in the Nile will all die. Moses and Aaron did what God commanded. The water turned into blood. However, when the Egyptians, magicians, were able to do the same miracle. Pharaoh turned his back to Moses and Aaron, and he returned to his palace without paying any attention to them. The second plague. Seven days later, God told Moses to go again to Pharaoh and request him to let his people go. If he would refuse, the whole country will be played with frogs. Pharaoh refused, and Aaron, following God's instructions, held his walking stick over the rivers, the canals and pools. Frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Again, the Egyptian magicians showed that they could do the same, and they made frogs come up on the land. Pharaoh told Moses and Aaron, Pray to God to take away the frogs, and I will let the Israelites go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses answered, I would be pleased to do so. When would you like me to pray? Tomorrow, replied Pharaoh. Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, and Moses the next day prayed to God to take away the frogs. The frogs died everywhere. The Egyptians piled them up in heaps, which stank terribly. Once Pharaoh saw the frogs were no longer a nuisance, turned again on his promise. The third plague. God then said to Moses, Tell Aaron to strike the ground with his stick. The dust will change into lice all over the land of Egypt. Aaron struck the ground with his stick, and all the dusts in Egypt turned into lice, which covered the people and the animals. The magicians tried to emulate Aaron's miracle, but this time they failed. The magicians went to Pharaoh and said, This is God's doing. Pharaoh did not believe them. The fourth plague. Early the next morning, Moses, following God's instructions, went to Pharaoh. As the king was going to the river and said, God has said, let my people go so they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send a swarm of flies on you. Your servants and your people, the houses of the Egyptians will be covered in flies and also the ground. Only in the region of Goshen, where my people live, there will be no flies. This will happen tomorrow. The next day, God sent swarms of flies 
to Pharaoh's palace and to the houses of his servants. The whole land of Egypt was ruined by the flies. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said to them, You can sacrifice to your God here in this country. Moses replied, That would not be the right thing to do, because the Egyptians will be offended by the sight of our sacrifices and they would stone us. We must travel three days into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to sacrifice to God in the desert, but don't go very far and pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave, I will pray to God that the flies should leave you tomorrow. But do not deceive us again and prevent the people from going to sacrifice to God. Moses left, prayed to God, and God removed the flies. But Pharaoh again did not let the people go. The fifth plague. God told Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him that the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you again refuse, a terrible sickness will kill your animals, your horses, your donkeys, your camels, your cattle, your sheep, and your goats. But the animals of the Israelites will not die. This will happen tomorrow. The next day God did as he had said. All the animals of the Egyptians died, but not one single animal of the Israelites died. Still, the Pharaoh did not allow the Israelites to go. The sixth plague. God told Moses, Get a few handfuls of ash from the furnace and throw it into the air in front of Pharaoh. Moses did so, and the ash spread out like a fine dust all over Egypt, producing boils and sores that became open sores on the people and the animals. The magicians did not come forward to confront Moses because they were covered with boils too, as were all the other e Egyptians. The stubborn Pharaoh again refused to listen to Moses and Aaron. The Seventh Plague God told Moses, Tomorrow rise up early in the morning and tell Pharaoh that the Lord the God of the Hebrews says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. This time I will strike you and your servants and your people that you may know that there is none like me in the entire world. I could have completely destroyed you with disease, but I have let you live to show you my power. Tomorrow I will cause the heaviest hail ever seen to fall on Egypt. Get your cattle under safe shelter because any person or animal left outside unprotected will die. Some of the officials in the court of Pharaoh feared what God had said and brought their slaves and animals indoors for shelter. Others did not believe in the warning and left them outside. God told Moses, raise your hand to and hail will fall. Moses raised his stick towards the sky, and God said thunder, lightning, and the heaviest hail that Egypt have ever known. It killed people and animals, and broke all the trees. The only place in Egypt where hail didn't fall was in the region of Goshen, where the Israelites lived. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron, and said, this time I have seen God is right, and my people and I are wrong. We have had enough of thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to say it any longer, as you said to him. As soon as I am out of the city, I shall raise my hands to God. The thunder and the hail will cease. But I know that you and your officials do not yet fear the Lord. When Pharaoh saw the hail and thunder, has ceased, he again changed his mind. Did not let the Israelites go. The eighth plague. Moses and Aaron returned to the Pharaoh and said to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews asks, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, they may worship me. If you refuse, I will bring locusts to Egypt, which will cover the whole land and Eat all the plants and trees that survive the hail. The locust will fall your palace and all the houses, something that your ancestors never saw. Moses, when he finished speaking, turned and left Pharaoh's presence without waiting. 
pronounce it. Pharaoh's court officials worried, spoke to him. How long will the man continue to be a snare to us? Let them go to worship their God. Don't you realize that Egypt is ruined? Moses and Aaron were brought back to the palace. Pharaoh said to them, Go worship the Lord, your God. But tell me, who will go? Moses replied, We will all go, young and old, with our sons and daughters, with the flock and our herds. For we must all observe the Lord's feast. Oh no, said Pharaoh. The men can go with you, because that is what you wish. But I will not let your children go. It is clear that you are planning something evil to trick me. And he had them expelled from his presence. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the land of Egypt. An east wind blew that day and night, bringing the locusts with it. They came in a thick mass, darkening the sky and covering the land. Never before had there been so many. And never again would they come in such numbers. They ate all the grass, plants, trees that had survived the hail. Nothing green was left in the fields and gardens of Egypt. Pharaoh had Moses and Aaron brought urgently to him and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Please forgive me this once and plead with the Lord your God to take this death away from us. God sent a west wind which lifted all the locusts and threw them into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in Egypt. But God hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. The ninth plague. Then God said to Moses, Hold out your arm towards the sky and there will be darkness over the land. A darkness so thick it can even be felt. The darkness came and lasted three days. People could not see one another and they stayed home, but the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings. Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. You can even take your children with you, but you must leave behind your flock and your herds, Moses answered. You must provide us with sacrifices and burnt offerings to offer to the Lord our God. Our cattle will go with us. Not one will be left behind, because we do not know with what we are to worship the Lord until we get there. God stiffened Pharaoh's heart and he said to Moses, Go away from me and take care never to see me again, because the moment that you will look upon my face you shall die. Moses replied, You have spoken rightly, I shall not see your face again. The Tenth Plague God said to him, I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After that, he shall let you go. Even more, he will drive you all out. Tell the people to borrow jewels of silver and gold from their neighbors. Moses announced, Thus says the Lord, Toward midnight I will go forth among the Egyptians, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of the Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the mill and all the firstborn of the cattle. And Moses continued, And there shall be a great cry in the land of Egypt such as never or will ever again be heard. But not a dog will move his tongue against the Israelites for their animals, so that you will know that the Lord differentiates between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Then your servants will come down to me and bow down low and beg us to depart. After that, I will depart. And he left Pharaoh's presence in hot anger. God instructed Moses and Aaron to tell the Israelites that each family on the 10th of that month should take a lamb and a yearling without blemish and slaughter it on the 14th of the month at twilight. They shall take some of the blood of the animal and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of their houses in which they are to eat it. Then they should roast the lamb over fire and eat it the same night with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. Whatever would be left until the morning should be burned. God added, You shall eat hurriedly, with sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, 
it is Passover offering to the Lord. For that night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, and I will punish all the gods of Egypt, and the blood on the house where you are staying shall be a sign for you. When I see the blood I will pass over, so that no plague will destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be to you one of remembrance. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout the ages. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your house. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day of the seventh month, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and told them what God had said to him. The people bowed low in homage, and then they went and carried out the instructions. In the middle of the night, God struck down all of the firstborn of Egypt. Pharaoh and his people rose up in the night, and there was a loud cry in Egypt, because there was not a single house where there was not someone there. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron that same night and told them, Rise the pot from among my people, you and the Israelites with you. Go, worship the Lord as you said. Take all your cattle and be gone, and pray for a blessing for me. The Egyptians, fearing that they would all die, urged the Israelites on, impatient to have them leave the country immediately. The Israelites took their unleavened dough and all the objects of gold and silver that they had borrowed from the Egyptians according to Moses' instructions and journeyed on foot from Ramesses to Succoth. 430 years after Jacob and his family had arrived in Egypt, their descendants, about 600,000 men, besides women and children, left the country with flocks and herds accompanied by a mixed multitude of foreigners. Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had requested on his deathbed that the Israelites should not leave his bones in Egypt. The shortest way from Egypt to Canaan passed through the land of the Philistines, but God, to prevent the people from changing their minds and turning back if they would encounter armed opposition, led the Israelites round about by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. The Ten Plagues of Egypt Welcome to my mom's kitchen. Today we're going to make the 10 plates cooking. So first we're going to take a blue oil skin. Then you can make it a blue and both black. This is the second place of rock. So we got cookies. We have icing. Now we're going to take the icing, the white one, and then put it on there. This is the plague of lights. This is the plague of pesta. This is the play 
tail of the animal that became ill. Congrats, a coarse breath. This is the plate of the boy. This is the plate of Hyla. This is how it looks like. Beautiful, the cloud, tail, and the green grass. This is the play of locusts. This is the plate of the glass. Okay, read. Put it here. There we go. This is the last break the day of the first born. <laughs> we are done. The ten plagues of Egypt. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. I do save your people. I do protect them and that they don't die. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bye. We pray Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26 over each family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.